Zipper. Come on, pull it down. How are you not pulling it down? All right, we'll just set the hook. There's some head shakes. Yeah, that's a better one. I didn't even put my Crocs on. River Rats, I'm uh, trying really, really hard not to get too excited, not get my hopes too high, but it's warm out, it's beautiful. And this is my first kayak float in the North Country this year. And fingers crossed something cool happens. So let's go. Yeah, if you're thinking that introduction looked a little too professional, uh, you'd be pretty right. But I'm out here with Luke and he is an actual professional. And he said, man, I'd love to tag along and I'd even shoot some shots for you and make your video better. And I'm like, well, that'd be fun. And hopefully makes the end product more enjoyable to watch. And it's a win-win for everybody. And he's a pretty cool dude and fun to hang out with. So I think it'll work out especially if the flatheads decide to play. But there's a brush pile right up here. It's gonna be our first stop. And I'm sure there's some fish in it. Now is the, the right fish in it, the one who's hungry and ready to go, I don't know. We're gonna fish it and find out. I just gotta paddle up there first. Well, this is where I wanted to set up. But uh, one of my scaled buddies is here first. Um, I don't want to bother you too much, amigo. No, oh, you you look annoyed. Just uh, yep. All right, bye. For some reason. Northern water snakes and flatheads go together. Ooh, that drag's a little loose. There we go. Fish pulls that drag off. He's one that we want to catch. Same with that one. I have a nice assortment of sunfish and bluegills. No bullheads today, unfortunately, but you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. They're not big, but they're big enough. Get to the bottom. Mm, I think that's the bottom. No, it's not the bottom. That was on a log. That's on the bottom. Well, when it comes to the daytime flatheads, if we're being honest, most of the time there nothing happens. This is a good spot. in the deeper part. We might, we might have one going. He is, he's small. For a gar. Interesting spot for a gar if it was one. Nothing at spot number one, which not uncommon by any means. Plenty of stuff to snag on though. I don't get off of here. Ooh, got him. Onwards and upwards.
I don't know what's going on here. Is this another gar? Yep. He's just hanging on to the blue heel. <laughs> uh, that got me excited again. It was a gar. Did you see it? Yeah. yeah. He never had the hook. He was just holding on to it. Oh, I'm a, he thumped it. It was just like a little bump. And I'm like, <laughs> fake out. I sit onwards and upwards, but we're at least going onwards. Handy tip, these little chapstick looking deals. They're sweet for putting sunscreen on without getting it on like the part of your hands that's going to touch your bait and whatnot. And if you have an exceptionally large nose like myself, they're even effective enough to cover all of that. And just like that, we have a sudden change of events. Uh, Luke appears to have moderately capsized his kayak. And uh, a variety of his things are floating downriver. Got one. Oh, this one's an important one. Better not miss this one. Got her. Got the croc. <laughs> We got another croc on its way. Get over here. Using the tools at our disposal. That's pretty funny. Hopefully none of his camera gear got soaked. That would suck. Everything else we can handle, I think. I never fished this log. I don't have any good reason why not. So I think I'm gonna, if I can get set up on it, right? Which I think I can. Give it five minutes. Try this one and then it'll go to the big pile down river. There's a little bit of depth here. Well, kind of fast. We'll give it a rip. Yeah, we'll just go fish the brush pile. Go straight to the juice. There's a lot of cool parts of kayak fishing. I mean, you can sneak up on stuff and get in little nooks and crannies and all that jazz, but I think one of the coolest parts is you feel every little bounce of your bait off the end of the rod that it like permeates through the boat and when you feel a bite like when a flyhead sucks a bait in it's just like electric you could be dead asleep it would wake you up in an instant at least it'd wake me up in an instant but that might be part of the reason why i'm out here but baits are active out here and no bites so i think i'm gonna we're gonna go in go into the, the, the jungle. A snake swam right next to my kayak. Not gonna lie, snakes don't really scare me, but when you see a movement out of the corner of your eye, right next to you, it definitely startled me a little bit. Yeah, now he's just chilling on the bank up there. Snakes are out thick today. So far, the flatheads are not, but that is flathead fishing. One more minute here and then I'm gonna keep moving. We've been paddling a lot. The countdown's kinda on, we got a ways to go. and We have three hours and 45 minutes of daylight and I'd like to get set up for camping and stuff before it gets dark. That might be wishful thinking. We're gonna paddle ways. There's a few spots to hit, and then there's a whole bunch of spots to hit once we get close to where we're gonna camp at. Still looking for the dumb one. We found lots of smart flatheads, I think. 
No dumb ones yet. It has been slow, but such is the life of a flathead fisherman. We're getting close to, I don't know if we're just gonna fish here and move on, or if we're gonna set up camp here. We're gonna evaluate, think, ponder, deep dive. I feel like I've done all that today and we haven't caught anything, but I'm gonna keep doing it anyway because I don't know what else to do. What? You? Deer. Deer? Yeah. Oh, apparently there's deer behind me. Okay. And they're gone. Not, you'll never believe me now. They're gone now. Yeah, there's no deer in Iowa. <laughs> Can't tell for sure, but it might be... It might be a little buck. Yeah, I see him in the background. Yeah, he's a little buck. He owns that tree. Nope. We're seven hours in with barely a nibble. I mean, there's flathead slow and then there's just slow and I think we're we're entering just the slow portion and I don't have any explanation why yeah I think we'll fish this spot for another couple minutes and head down we're gonna set up camp so what's happening right now is Luke's airing up his air mattress Yay. on a cut bank that is not ideal for camping not even close and we don't really want to camp here but I think it's our best shot at a flathead because the sandbar drop-off that used to be here isn't here yep. so what you, you do what you got to do in the name of the flathead <laughs> and that's that's what we're doing the fire is rolling current highlight of the trip is about to show up Luke brought some uh, what cuts you get? Oh, these are ribeyes. Prime. Oh, you got aged ribeyes. The prime. Probably the nicest cut of meat I'll eat all year. Yeah, these are these are gonna be good. We're gonna let that grill top heat up just a smidge, and we're gonna have some steaks rolling. Psst. Yes. No salt, no pepper, seasoned by nature. <laughs> Update soon. I got him. He's very small. <laughs> But it is a fish, and we haven't had any of them. Oh, stay on, buddy. I'm debating whether I want to say, Luke, watch the steaks or run the camera. I'm doing both. <laughs> Very nice. What is it? A little flathead? Kind of looks like it. Sure is. This uh, ends my multi-hour long flathead drought. And in celebration, I think I'm going to take him home and eat him. <laughs> Flatheads, uh, I don't know, they're my favorite catfish to eat. And that's about prime eater sized. That'll probably make, I don't know, eight or ten tacos. At least how I make them. And I haven't had flathead in a while and I'm pretty darn excited about it. This is probably like a three-ish pounder. Maybe four, we'll call them 3.8. But uh, how's he look with the smoke? He looks amazing. Does he really? <laughs> but uh, if you dismantle them right, you know, you can get like 70, 80% return on meat for weight. So I'm gonna eat him and I'm, I'm pretty happy about it.
they definitely look phenomenal at least for you know I'm not the hardest to please <laughs> the hardest part for me is letting them sit <laughs> there you go bud thank you mm -hmm. alright I'm gonna just sit this down I'm just gonna sit that down and just pretend it's not there for five minutes Luke couldn't wait. <laughs> oh, it's hot, but once it hits your lips, it's so good. See, everyone gives me such a hard time for eating food so fast, but when you're out there, out here, you're just starving. He just got it. He just got to dig into it. He's got to embrace it. I can't, can't disagree with that logic. Let's dig in here. <laughs> Choice cut ribeye, courtesy of. Luke. Mm. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. All right. We'll check back in, hopefully, with about a 50 pounder here shortly. Come on, pull it down. How are you not pulling it down? All right, we'll just set the hook. There are some head shakes. Yeah, that's a better one. I didn't even put my Crocs on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he just took off. I'm gonna stay planted. Oh, he's running at me. Yeah, I'm gonna stay right here so I don't fall. All right, we're gonna, we gotta move. There's some head shakes. Yeah, he's not big, big, but man, he took off like crazy. Oh yeah, there's a fly head. Another eater sized one. He bit in the right order, so he's gonna get let go. Smacked him. He was going nowhere. No monster. But we are going the correct direction in size. He's a fine eating specimen that bit at the correct time. and He's going to get released to hopefully be about 58 pounds. Hopefully I see him when he's 58 pounds. Hey right, bud. This will present me a good opportunity to rinse my feet off too. Man, he's got some cool colors. See ya. Back to bed. Okay. I think we found Charlie Channel Cat. Oh, a little more weight. Oh. We just ran into a rock. You are who I thought you were. Easy. You're fat, dude. Okay, that's a good way to wake up in the morning. <sighs> Scared me. I was actually asleep asleep. Well, our plans... Our plans shifted slightly. Because uh, when I caught that flathead, I tied him to my bait tank. Because it's all rock, you know, and I got a, not a good place to put a stringer. And uh, he ripped my bait tank off the bank and assume it's downstream somewhere. My hope is that we just find it bobbing, but like there's a real possibility that stupid little flathead buried himself under a rock and now it's, I don't know, that'd be a lot of momentum to stop in the current. 
but that kind of screws up the plan of fishing our way down because we have no bait <laughs> well i was already gonna kill that fish but i wanted to kill before i was gonna kill him because just because i wanted to eat him now i want to kill him because i'm mad at him <laughs> still gonna eat him if i find it I'm, I'm holding out hope. I'm not mad, mad yet. Uh, there's a chance, but uh, we'll see. Look at you. Doctor professional. Made it. Now to find my bait tank and my lunch. First half a mile, three quarters of a mile, no bait tank. You know, overall, I'm a pretty lucky guy, but in instances like this, I swear if I didn't have bad luck, I wouldn't have any luck at all. Still kind of sucks. The further we float without finding it, the uh, more the doubt seems to grow in my mind. I'm gonna keep looking, because you know, we're going that direction either way i just have a sneaky suspicion that that little flathead got wrapped in a log or a rock or something and because that bait tank's full of 40 pounds of water which somehow he still ripped off the bank well probably 30 whatever he ripped 30 pound or 30 pound bait tank off of that was sitting on flat ground off the bait or bank but it's, it's pretty neutrally buoyant, so if you got tangled in anything, it's gonna get pulled underwater. My only hope is that it like floated with him into the bank and it's we see it bobbing. But if he had enough juice to rip it off the bank, he's probably got enough juice to get down to the bottom and get tangled in something. Whatever, can't do anything about it now, just... We spotted it! I can't believe it! At least part of it. I can't tell if it's if the the lid is open. It is running. It is pumping because it's shooting water out of it. Holy crap! That thing went on one heck of a ride. Wow. I figured there was no way I was getting this back. <laughs> oh, there she is. Boy, step one. Yeah, it's not supposed to pump water out of it like that. Well, if I was a betting man, I would bet this moment wasn't going to happen. And there's the culprit right there. What a butthead. I guess, I mean, if I was going to get eaten, I would have fought back pretty hard, I like to think, as well. Wow. All right. Yeah, still can't believe I have this. Well... I didn't think we were gonna find it, but this is pretty cool. We'll see if it works, how well it works, if it's glitchy or whatnot. I'd be surprised if it works perfect, but I'm surprised we found it. Either way, I'm, I'm glad we found it. And I still have my lunch. But I think that's gonna do it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed the adventure. There was quite a bit of adventure on this one. You can't have adventure without a little bit of suck. And we had a little bit of that. So we'll call it a real adventure, but hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. Really appreciate taking time to watch. Hope you catch a giant. We spotted it. I can't believe it. <laughs>